Hello, brothers and sisters. Another gorgeous day in central Alabama. So how do you like my backyard? It's pretty out here. Today I want to do a short study on the second half of Revelation 7. Revelation 7 is a chapter, like many in the book of Revelation, that uh, many people are getting the understanding of it wrong. Today we're not going to be addressing the first half of Revelation 7, which is the uh, 144,000. I wish I can give you more understanding and commentary from me uh, other than what's already in the Word of God, but I can't, so I'm not going to touch it. But the other half of Revelation 7, I can give you understanding on and comment on. And I've done a short study that you'll see me flash on your screen every now and then during this lesson. But it's really interesting how if you incorporate the study of the made white, keyword made, M-A-D-E, made white, um, and, and you're going to see where you can find it in other passages of the Bible like Daniel 12 and Revelation 19 besides Revelation 7. And it's going to help you understand Revelation 7. Now, you might not consider this short study good news in it, uh, if I say that because so many people believe in a pre-tribulation rapture or even a mid-tribulation rapture. But this study of the made white is going to help you understand that Revelation 7 has absolutely nothing to do with a rapture of those who are alive and remain. I wish it did, but I'm going to help you correctly understand the second half of Revelation 7. We're going to tie it all together. Let's start out in Revelation 7. Go ahead and open there in your Bibles. And we're going to look at the second half, which starts in verse 9 of Revelation 7. And then we're going to go to uh, the end of the chapter, which is verse 17. I find verse 9 interesting for two different reasons. Number one, Verse 9 of the previous chapter, Revelation 6, is where we start the study of the fifth seal and the start the study of the Great Tribulation is in verse 9 of Revelation 6. So I find that interesting. And then here in Revelation 7, verse 9, we're back to talking about the event that starts at the fifth seal. And then also, this same event starts in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. So I think that's, that helps us understand, that helps us remember, and they all do fit together nicely, even though it's not a subject that we like to talk about, Christian martyrdom. That's, that is the subject of Revelation 7, the second half. So we're going to read verses 9 through 17, and then I'm going to take you to many other passages in the Bible so you can, you can know once and for all what is Revelation 7 talking about, especially in regards to the made white or made them white or washed them white. So, verse 9, Revelation 7, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues... Remember, tribes, peoples, and tongues, you're going to see that later in another passage that's talking about the same event. But this number, this multitude, which no one could number, first of all, God can number that number, right? And But man can't. What's he saying? This is a large number of people that are seen in this vision by John up in heaven the third heaven. Uh, this is not um, a vision of Jesus' appearing here on earth in over Zion. 
That's not what this vision is. This vision is what I'm going to prove to you using other scriptures. This is the vision of the seventh trumpet of Daniel chapter 7. Okay, this Revelation 7, second half, is the vision that Daniel saw in Daniel 7, right here in Revelation 7. And the conclusion of this event is when this ceremony takes place. But we don't just read about the ceremony. We also learn things about this event. And when we go to other passages of the Bible talking about this same event, we'll see the duration, the length of time. But the conclusion of this event is what Revelation 7 is talking about, which is the same event that Daniel saw in Daniel 7. But this number that no one could number, well, turn back one page. In your Bible, just flip back one page and go to the fifth seal passage of Revelation 6, which is, not by coincidence, verses 9 through 11. It's the 911 passage of Revelation 6. Hallelujah. So, Turn back to Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11, and this number is, is spoken of by the Word of God. Verse 9 uh, of, of Revelation 6, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the Word of God and for the testimony which they held. That's not talking about just the testimony of who the God of the universe is, Father Yahweh, but it's also, when you see testimony in the book of Revelation, we're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And in other chapters of Revelation, it makes it very clear what's meant by the testimony. You see it in Revelation 14, for example, and Revelation 12 and 13. But here in Revelation 6, the fifth seal passage, in verses 9 through 11, you see a number mentioned. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Well, that how long, right here in Revelation 6, is the same how long in uh, Daniel 12. Same in Revelation 12. It's the same how long. It's that 42-month hour of trial of Revelation 3.10, right? When Satan is cast to earth and he makes war on the followers of Jesus Christ who have the testimony to the truth of Revelation 12 and 13. Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both, here it is, the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. So Almighty God is, He knows, you could think of it this way, He knows in advance, thousands of years in advance, exactly how many Christians are going to be martyred during the 42 months long hour of trial that, that's coming upon the earth beginning at the fifth seal. He knows that number. And until that number is completed, which is the number of the next chapter, Revelation 7, until that number is completed, the 42 months is not completed, the event of day 1290 cannot occur, which is the vision of those gathered before the throne, standing before the throne dressed in white of Revelation 7. That is the seventh trumpet verdict of Daniel 727. That is day 1290, and that is the vision, the ceremony, at the conclusion of the 42 months, not the fifth seal ceremony, a seventh trumpet ceremony, but the 42 months of how long until you uh, judge and avenge those who shed our blood, right? It's after the 42 months is completed and the number of martyrs is completed. We don't like to think of Revelation 70 in that way but I'm going to just stay with me if you don't agree. I'm going to prove to you that that is the case uh, in this study of the made white. And we'll be also be going to many other passages, including Daniel 12's made white and Revelation 19's made white. 
So, you understand what's going on in these three verses of the Revelation 6, 9, 1, 1 passage of, of Revelation 6? It is the fifth seal. The fifth seal is not the ceremony in Revelation 7, but it's when the 42 months long event called the hour of trial of Revelation 3.10, when it begins, right? That same event of Revelation 12 and 13, right? That lasts for 42 months, three and a half years, 1260 days, which concludes when? Well, Revelation 11, thank goodness, tells us, so we don't have to argue over it, when the 42 months concludes. And it's not the seventh bowl appearing of Jesus. It's a four or five weeks earlier. A less than 45 day period earlier is day 1290. And thanks to Revelation 11, we know the 42 months concludes when the sixth trumpet period concludes. And the two witnesses are seen rising from the dead in the streets of uh, Jerusalem. So, you see the how long here in this 911 passage. You also see the word number mentioned. That's the same number mentioned in the next chapter, Revelation 7, that only Father knows. But notice in Revelation 7, let's turn back there. In Revelation 7, to get an idea of how many people are standing before the throne at the seventh trumpet dressed in white because they've made themselves ready. Hallelujah. Um, it's a number that no human can number. And so we're not talking about 144,000. Get that out of your mind. You know, my grandchildren can count way past 144,000. They can count probably more than a trillion. They love to count. Ones from King David's day, not the ones from a thousand years ago's day that comes out of the Great Tribulation. So, bottom line is be prepared for millions of Christians to be killed for their faith during the 42-month period around the whole planet. I didn't say in America, but counting the whole planet, it'll be in the millions. But it's a number that no man would want to try to count. You know, just using your eyeballs, one, two. So... But we're just getting started in this short study. If you think I'm way off on a tangent that's really uh, disheartening to the church and you think that I'm probably wrong, uh, stay with me. Don't go anywhere. We've got some really key passages to show you. Uh, let's keep reading Revelation 7. Where did we leave off at? I think we left off at verse 10 and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Pay attention to that phrase. Um, to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb because you see that again in verse 15 of this same chapter. But I, I, I highlight it because that's what you see in the six seal passage of Revelation 6, right, the previous page. So if you turn back to Revelation 6 again, just by flipping back one page, you see the wrath of God described, which comes upon the earth at the sixth seal, okay? But in verse 16 of Revelation 6, look how the wrath of God is worded. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, I've done many studies on that wrath of God over the years, and I have found out that the face of him who sits on the throne wrath is phase one of the day of the Lord, six seal through the end of the sixth bowl. But when Jesus appears on the last day of this age, after the pouring of the seventh bowl, now we move into phase two of the day of the Lord, and it is the day of Christ, his indignation, his fierce anger, when he is threshing the Middle East, Isaiah 27 says, acting as the severe sword of Almighty God, and he will lead his exceedingly great armies of heaven as they thresh from the Euphrates River Basin to the brook of Egypt, Isaiah 27, 12. Um, Revelation 16 refers to this time of threshing the land, which really is the extended borders of Israel during the millennium, the, uh, this time is known as the battle of the great day of God Almighty. 
Don't confuse that with the war on Israel that starts at the sixth seal, when Father himself says, I'm bringing the Assyrian out of the north, right? That man from Al-Mazil, Iraq, Nahum 1, verse 11. I'm bringing him against you, O Israel, and I will execute judgments in the midst of the nations who I'm bringing against you. That's Ezekiel chapter 5, especially verse 8. That's what the seventh trumpets are, or at least the first six. They are Father executing, well, let's say the first five, executing judgments on his people in the midst of the enemies who Father is bringing against them, right? Joel 2. And then, of course, the battle of the great day of God Almighty, when Jesus appears, um, you see that in Joel 3, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 14, Isaiah 17, many other passages, Jeremiah 50, 51. But, of course, in Joel 3, you also see the bowls of wrath leading up to the appearing of Jesus Christ. You see the sixth bowl, especially in Joel 3, when the nations are being gathered to the valley of Armageddon in northern Israel. They're being gathered to the valley of Jehoshaphat surrounding Jerusalem. Then, after the nations are in place, we have the appearing of Jesus Christ to start the battle of the great day of God Almighty, which is the wrath of the Lamb. All right, back to Revelation 7. we got to pick up the pace. Verse 11 of Revelation 7, All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. This is the ceremony, the seventh trumpet ceremony of Daniel 7, and uh, Revelation 11, uh, this Revelation 7, it's the same seventh trumpet ceremony. Again, we just finished the first six seals of the scroll in Revelation 6. Now we go to Revelation 7, and we expect to see the seventh seal. But the Word of God does not give us the seventh seal in Revelation 7, he waits till the chapter 8 to give us the seventh seal. So what Father does in this second half of Revelation 7, he's really going back, like I just did, to the fifth seal. Because Revelation 7 is showing you what the effect of the 42 months, right? That how long, O Lord? That how long? So... Revelation 7 is showing you the 42-month event known as the hour of trial in Revelation 3.10. Some, uh, and in Revelation, we also see it called the Great Tribulation. Uh, and also, we see it called the, uh, the, test by f the test that reveals by fire. Right? Paul gives it that title in 1 Corinthians 3.13. And Peter calls it the fiery trial or the hour of trial uh, by fire. In um, 1 Peter chapter 1, I believe. So that's what this uh, great tribulation is. It's the Revelation 3, right? When Jesus says, hey, well, let's go ahead and read it. Turn back to Revelation 3, verse 10, and that's what the Great Tribulation is that affects um, Christians during this time. But it's not, the Great Tribulation is just not on Christians, right? We're not talking about Father's wrath on His anointed. That's not what we're talking about. But Father does permit Satan to make war against Christianity for 42 months, okay? But this hour of trial, which Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians 2, these lying wonders, these miracles, uh, Revelation 13 talks about it, right? Where even the image that shall, uh, the, the image of the beast shall be given power to speak, right? These lying wonders you see in Revelation 13, fire coming down from the sky, called for by the false prophet. It's going to be a time of testing. In Revelation 3, Verse 10 reads like this, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon Christianity. That's not what it says. The whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. 
What's the test? Well, you see it in Revelation in verse 13, right? It's the mark of the beast bowing before his image, right? Who's going to not be faithful to Jesus? That's the falling away, those who won't walk with him any longer, because they wouldn't even consider giving up their life for the faith if they had to. That, in their mind, would be asking way too much from Jesus. Um, so back to Revelation 7. Let's finish that, and I want to take you to these other passages. All right, we left off at verse 13. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? Pay attention to the white robes. And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, right, this is John talking. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. So that's why I said what I said earlier. Don't try to make this number that's too large to even count, that no person would want to try to count. Don't make it out to be Christians from the last 2,000 years, people whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the last 6,000 years. No, we're talking about the 42 months of Revelation 13 and Revelation 3's hour of trial, war on Christianity from Satan, and also the mark of the beast test that's going to test all people on the earth. And we know what happens to those who worship the, the Assyrian from Al-Mazil, Iraq, and his kingdom, and his false prophet, and his God, we know what becomes of them because the Bible tells us that when Jesus comes at the seventh bowl, he's going to send his angels out. Um, after he's gathered his elect, then it'll be time to burn the tares and he will gather, send his angels out to gather up all those with the mark of the beast and to cast them into the lake of fire. All who offend him and his father Yahweh, the God of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the universe. Yahweh and his son Jesus. So, back to Revelation 7, verse 15. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. When you're reading that and you're trying to figure out where is this temple at? Is it the millennial temple? Is it the third heaven temple? What is it? Well, we can make the answer to that easy by just referring to its relevance to eternity. And the answer is found in Revelation 22, verses 1 through 3. That's keeping it easy, right? Because the new Jerusalem is going to come down from heaven to planet Earth, not some other planet, not in the spiritual realm, to planet Earth. The new Jerusalem is going to come down at the end of the 1,000-year millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible gives us the dimensions of it. And it's going to be so large, this structure, that it's actually going to be about the size of the east coast of America. What we're doing is we're taking that event that causes that in Revelation 7, and we're going to match that up with other passages, which will give you the correct understanding of the event found in um, Revelation 7. And you'll be able to tell we're not talking about a secret rapture of those who are alive and remain. And this will prove that. In case that's still bugging you, you're still trying to figure that out because you've had people tell you that Revelation 7's vision is those uh, who are being taken to heaven via the rapture. Well, stay with me and I'll be able to prove to you that's, that's not the case. Let's go to Daniel 12, verse 10. If the wind, if the wind will cooperate, Daniel 12, verse 10. We can do it. All right, I made it to Daniel 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand 
but the wise shall understand. And when you're seeing all of these words understand, a passage that should come to remembrance immediately is Daniel 11 verses 29 through 35 because the people of understanding who find themselves in Jerusalem at the time of the fifth seal abomination of desolation, um, we see that they are the people of understanding and they choose not to go to the place prepared by God in the Judean wilderness, right? That's mentioned in Revelation 12. They may send their families but they choose to go shoulder to shoulder with Elijah and the other witness during this 42 months, fifth seal to seventh trumpet period. And again, we know when it ends, thanks to Revelation 11. And, uh, and many of them, the, word, the Bible says many, not all, many of them will die for their faith and for their testimony. And you might say, ooh, well, it's just those in Jerusalem. No, that's how it starts. That's how it starts. Now, over the course of 42 months, there'll be a number of martyrs that are such a large number that no human would want to even count that number. And that number is spoken of in uh, Revelation 6. When that number is completed, Father works it out. And that'll be the same time that Elijah and the other witness are killed for their faith. And then, of course, raised from the dead three and a half days later. So that's Daniel 12.10 in regards to the made white of Revelation 3, uh, Revelation 7.14. Now we're going to go to Revelation 19, verse, I think it's 14. Let's see. Go back to Revelation 7 where my notes are. And uh, yeah, we were in Revelation 7, 14, Daniel 12, 10. Now let's go to Revelation 19, 7. Verse 7 of Revelation 19. To help us with our short study on made white. To help us understand Revelation 7. So Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. So made white, made them white, and made herself ready are all talking about the 42 months of martyrdom, these people who come out of the great tribulation and die for their faith. And um, to help us prove that even a little bit more, I have a few other passages I wanna take you to. Um, let's go to, let me go back to my notes page. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 13, verses 5 through 10. Revelation 13, verses 5 through 10. Here we go. And he was given a mouth speaking blasph blasphemies. He was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. That answers the question of the how long. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Remember the Revelation 7? Tribe, peoples, and nations? Well, tribes, tongues, and nations. This is the, the match to that verse in Revelation 7. He's making war with the saints. Please don't think that's just Jerusalem Christians or Israeli Christians. That's how it starts. But it's these 42 months, it's going to be a number of martyrs that are so large that no human would even want to attempt to count it. So we're not talking about a few thousand inside of Jerusalem who don't flee to the place prepared by God in time. That is how it will begin. But this is going to spread worldwide, this mark of the beast, hour of trial, great tribulation, to test all who dwell on the earth. Now, the wrath of God comes upon the wicked. 
starting with the wicked in Israel and going on to uh, judge the wicked throughout the earth. Okay, God's wrath is not appointed on us, but he has appointed uh, Satan to permit Satan to overcome us, to make war against us. When I say overcome us, I'm not talking about the same overcoming that you read about in Revelation 12 or Daniel 7. I'm talking about to, to kill the life, not the soul. And we see in Revelation 12 and 13 that Father is permitting Satan to, when, he's, when God is testing the whole earth using that mark of the beast, he's permitting Satan to make war on us. And the reason he's doing that is so that when the number is completed, we will officially, Daniel 7, 27, I'm going to say it again, Daniel 7, 27, that day 12, 97th trumpet ceremony you see in Revelation 7 and Daniel 7, that is us overcoming him, Satan, because we were faithful unto death and a certain number Father wants to see of martyrs. But the amount of reward that all Christians get, but especially those who are willing to lay down their lives for their brethren, for their testimony, um, they're going to be in the inner courts, if you will, of the new Jerusalem, right? Revelation 22 verses 1 through 3, and serve him day and night. So it's, it's, it's almost like a special shout out, almost like an additional medal, a war medal, you know, campaign medal. Um, there's going to be some additional honor given to those who are willing to lose it all. And they uh, shall be, of course, given life for the life, eternal life for the life that they were willing to give up for the testimony of Jesus. So that was uh, Revelation 13. Again, this allowing Satan to overcome our physical lives is what's going to cause us to overcome him at the seventh trumpet and and the age of Satan will come to an end and Father will put him in handcuffs and then release him again for just a short time uh, at the end of the millennial reign of Christ prior to going into eternity and having Father bring down the new Jerusalem uh, but allowing Father is going to allow Satan to overcome a certain number of us physically so that we can overcome him, Revelation 12, 11, Daniel 7, 27, and the earth can be awarded to the saints of the Most High God. Hallelujah. All right, back to my notes in Revelation 7. Got a few more passages I want to show you. Put the icing on the cake. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 17. Revelation 12, verse 17, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's who the saints are of the last days. If you try to put that title with just a particular people, you're wrong. The saints of the Most High God of Daniel 7, 27, right, are these people right here in Revelation 12, 17. Notice how a lot of the numbers match, too. It's pretty cool. Um, let's go to... Well, we've all... Well, I've talked a lot about Daniel 7.27, which is day 1290, the seventh trumpet conclusion. Same day that uh, Revelation 11 ends with. Uh, I think that's enough. I think we've proved our point. I think I've proved my point. I hope so. Um, the maid white is the made them white is the made herself ready, right? Revelation 9, 19, 7, Revelation 7, 14, and Daniel 12, 10. Pay attention to the word made. I hope that helps you understand the maid of Revelation 7. Brothers and sisters, if you have any questions about anything that I said today, please leave a comment. Um, don't confuse the wrath of God with the...
the hour of trial. The wrath of God comes upon the wicked of the, of the earth, um, beginning at the sixth seal. Phase one of the wrath of God, which is the wrath of the face of him who sits on the throne of Revelation 6, 16. It's also uh, phase one of the day of the Lord. The wrath of God is also uh, the title to Isaiah 2, verse 10, the terror of the Lord of hosts, right? But when you're talking about phase two of the wrath of God, now Jesus is here and he's going to lead not only the exceedingly great armies of heaven into battle, but he's also going to lead uh, the remnant of his people, the one third of his people left alive. He's going to, who are free of the mark of the beast. We are going to father our, follow our Lord into battle as he's also leading Israel, uh, the remnant of it, and they shall possess those who possessed them. And it'll be time for Jesus to start plundering. And that is called the wrath of the Lamb, his indignation. And Isaiah 2, phase 2 of the day of the Lord, is called the, um, the glory of his majesty. Right? Phase 1, phase 2. So don't confuse the wrath of God on the wicked with the hour of trial that's going to test all who dwell on the earth. That's a good way to end this short study. Don't confuse the two, and don't try to say that if Father allows the saints uh, who have the testimony of Jesus to be overcome physically by Satan, that that must be the wrath of God on Christians. That's not true. And as soon as you get that, you'll be able to understand the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel. Two different things. When does the, uh, the how long, the 42 months, great tribulation, hour of trial to test those who dwell on the earth? What seal, trumpet, or bowl does it start? Fifth seal, when Satan is cast to earth. And we know that Satan is cast to earth because that's when the follower, uh, excuse me, that's when the Antichrist, who will come forth from al mazil Iraq, Nahum 111, when he begins speaking blasphemies and pompous words against the Most High God, Yahweh, and his son Jesus Christ. That's how you know Satan is now here. That starts the 42 months, and he has possessed the man of sin. But Israel and the world will have a year and some days, says Isaiah 32 10, right? To um, get Israel to turn back to Father Yahweh and his son Jesus. If they do that prior to the sixth seal, and that length of the fifth seal is found in Isaiah 32, Isaiah 7, Isaiah 8. It's a year and some days. And if Elijah is not successful, then here comes the wrath of God on planet Earth called the curse of the song of Moses, Daniel 9, verse 11. How about that? And Deuteronomy 32, of course. And here it comes, just as it was promised in Deuteronomy 31, at the very end of Deuteronomy 31, the promised curse of Deuteronomy 32, the Father says, I'm going to pour this out on the last generation of Israel. And the world will get caught up in it, and the world will get judged as well. You're going to take the mark and worship the beast or not. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, until I see you again, God bless.